Hi YouTube. Okay, so I haven't done a review for six, seven months or something, and I'm well aware how crap my camera still is. It keeps making me go grey, so I have to keep sitting back to get some colour in. But um, I'm finally doing a review, yay! And this is going to be uh, five of the best Arnie movies. There are loads, but there are some shit ones too. But I just picked five that personally I think are the best. Um, but yeah, but first off, I'd like to do a quick shout out to the person who kind of got me off my ass in doing this review, who goes by the name of Too Cool Tim X, I guess, the Halloween freak on YouTube. I just went on your channel. Um, thank you for your um, message anyway. And the first video that pops up on your channel is of an After Dark original, and I'd just like to say, here's my After Dark originals. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw that on your channel because I don't know anybody else that watches them. I'm a bit of a freak. I like films and no one else I know does, so I'm going to be giving your video a watch once I've done this. Um, and there's something else I wanted to say. Oh yeah, and you asked me about Halloween themed movies. Um, this is the best one ever, Trick or Treat. I did say this in my comment, but in case you can't find it or you want to at least know what it looks like, this is it. I hope you've seen this. If you haven't, I've made your day. <laughs> Watch it. Okay, so here we get on with the five best Arnie movies. And I do have a massive tendency to ramble, but I don't make these for anyone to really watch them. I make them because I I have no one to talk to about films. So I just, this is my rant. This is my vent area. So if you do see them, great. And maybe I informed you about something because I like watching people's review videos and I'm really, really white. I'm sorry. Um, but let's get started, I'll just be quick. Um, okay, so, number five, Predator. <laughs> Predator is number five, not because I think it's the worst, just because I didn't bother putting them in any order, because I can't, because they're really good. So, it's just going to go like this. So, Predator came out in 1987. Um, a bunch of people that you kind of already know. I mean, most people have seen all Arnie films, so I doubt you're going to learn anything new from this review, but I get to vent, so. Um, yeah, of course we had, um, what's his name? We had Apollo Creed in it, uh, Carl Weathers, that's his name, and we had Jesse Ventura in it, and a bunch of other people, and it's basically a testosterone filled jungle adventure with aliens. <laughs> there's no jungle creatures, there's an alien. Um, and I learned something quite interesting. Um, this film actually came about because when they made Rocky IV, they were joking that he had no one else to fight. So they were like, oh, if you fight someone else, it's going to be an alien. And they took it, that joke seriously and came up with Predator. How cool is that? That's brilliant. I didn't know that. Um, anyway, yeah, so the basic plot of Predator, I'm not really going to give a huge plot because most people know how this film's going. The basic plot of Predator is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger goes by the name of Dutch, is a nickname. Um, and he and his uh, group of soldiers, his like platoon or whatever you want to call it, they get sent out into the middle of the jungle. I think it's like, I can't remember, it's like the Congo, it's like the Amazon, you know, it's like the Brazilian jungles. Um, they go out there um, to rescue another team, I think. <laughs> I've seen this from quite a few times, I should know this stuff. Uh, they go to rescue another team, and uh, it's all a bit hush hush, a bit shady. And as the film progresses, they find out that obviously they were sort of, you know, they weren't really expected to come back, I don't think. Um, and there's an alien out there um, who's essentially a predator because he picks them all off one by one. He's been doing this for God knows how many years. Um, teams disappear out there all the time. And as the film goes on, you just watch them go through the jungle, um, finding very odd things. They come across, um, I think they come across like a sort of, uh, um, like a drugs cartel. And they end up uh, taking a prisoner who ends up being the only woman in the movie, of course. Who doesn't end up being a love interest, which is funny, because usually they do do that. Um, they do that in all of his other ones, like Commando and Twins and all that, but we'll get on to those later. Um, but yeah, she's, she kind of gives them the backstory on the legend that there's a thing out there. And then the whole movie is just watching them get picked off one by one until we get to Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end, who basically goes one on one and everybody knows, get to the chopper, which is an awesome quote. Um, and I will say this, my absolute all-time favourite Arnold Schwarzenegger quote is not in any of my review. I will review the film in a different section. It's from The Running Man. So maybe I'll do a Stephen King section. My favourite quote of all time is when he 
flips over Dynamo's little car thing, and Dynamo's going like, ah, right before he does that, like, no, I think it's right afterwards, he's about to electrocute the girl, and he shouts, hey, Christmas tree. <laughs> so stupid i don't know why i find it so funny but it's it, i think it's literally the dumbest thing he's ever said and that's really saying something but yeah hey christmas tree is um my favorite all-time one okay we're well done with predator by the way um i'm not going to keep yakking because i always do um and i apologize about my crappy camera jesus christ i can't do anything about it because it's a built-in laptop webcam that's a bit better so I can't, it's just, there's nothing for me to even touch. I can't fix it. Uh, yeah, number four is Twins. I don't have it on DVD, so I don't have the thing. But um, I think most people have seen Twins. And the funny thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger is that, I guess like Stallone, except Stallone only has one version. He's only got Stop and My Mum Will Shoot. Arnie can do both. He can do romantic comedy slash sort of plain comedy slash slapstick and pure hardcore action. He can do it all. He's amazing. Twins came out in 1998, and of course it's him and Danny DeVito, and the plot of Twins is basically that he, him and Danny DeVito are twins, they've grown up on different sides of the world, um, when they, they were told their mother died, but in fact she was told they died because they were part of an experiment. So they were genetically created in a lab, and uh, when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who plays Julius, turns 35, the man that's grown up with him, brought him up, tells him that he's got a brother, in America, so he goes out to find him and um, has to convince Danny DeVito that he's his brother. Um, but they're so, <laughs> they're just so different. They just look so different. And he's up there and he's down there and he's strong and he's not. And he doesn't have a clue and he's got street smarts. And it's just one of those awesome, you know, where they just constantly bump against each other and it creates hilarious situations. They, of course, have two love interests in this movie Kelly Preston, the fit one for Arnold Schwarzenegger and the girl that I can't remember her bloody name who's got a perm for Danny DeVito um, and then of course Danny DeVito is kind of see this is one of the only films where there's no real threat there's always a threat in an Arnie film but I guess Danny DeVito is the antagonist in this because he's the one that gets him into trouble he's like a petty criminal because obviously he had a crap childhood and a crap life whereas Julius got all the perks because he's the strong fit fine one um, so he kind of gets them into trouble where he's got loan sharks running after them and they have to kind of, they go on a journey together where they, they get to know each other but they run away from possible threats and of course Arnold Schwarzenegger gets to flex his muscles and beat up all these dickheads that are going after his brother. That's basically twins. Um, I don't think I wrote down any like little quips or notes or anything. I tried to find some little trivia bits for any, anyone, you know. Um, I don't really think I've got anything... Here, I think it was, was it, I think it was, um, I think it did pretty well in the box office, I think, it was pretty good, I didn't write down if it wasn't, but we'll get on to the third one now, so we are on number three, Kindergarten Cop, another one of his comedy kitty. I have a box for this, my brother bought me this, like a pound, <laughs> I've seen this film about 20,000 times, I don't know anybody here that hasn't seen this film, but I do know someone that hasn't seen Terminator, so I'm not going to look at you all and think, oh, well, you've all seen it, because you know what? There's always one that hasn't. <laughs> um, yeah, so Kindergarten Cop, um, for those of you who don't know the plot, it's pretty simple. He is a hardcore LAPD cop from Austria, of course, <laughs> and uh, he has to go undercover as a kindergarten teacher. Now, for years, until I was probably about 20, I thought this film was called Kindergarten Cop, because we don't have kindergarten here in the UK. That's an American thing. I've never heard of that before, so I've been calling it Kindergarten Cop my whole life. I don't think anyone noticed, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, and obviously he's a big guy, he's a cop, he doesn't know how to teach little kids, so obviously it's funny because all the little kids come up with stupid stuff. I mean, I think everyone knows the who is your daddy and what does he do thing, and the little kid that constantly talks about dying. Oh, you've got a headache, have you? Oh, it's probably a tumour. And of course there's the little kid that they they paid to say oh, I've got a penis and girls have a vagina because his dad's a gynecologist <laughs> why <laughs> I don't know why but yeah so um yeah so he he's basically gone undercover in this particular classroom because there is apparently a child in the classroom um who who is the son of this criminal they've been trying to get for years 
and they want to find the child and his mother because apparently she ran off with three million dollars um, and they want to get her to testify against him but this all turns out to be not true he just said that so that they could get the cops to find her for him and obviously there's a big showdown at the end where he goes up against the criminal and blah blah blah, blah. but it's a wonderful film because it's just you know I love the way he says Astoria as well. I love the way he says Astoria and the word ferret. Don't know why, I just love the way he says it. Um, oh, he got paid $12 million to do this movie. Even Julia Roberts didn't get paid that. She broke about it in that other film. Um, Ivan Reitman directed this, who's done a bunch of other, like, he's done some seriously hardcore awesome movies. He's done all the Ghostbusters. He directed Meatballs as well, which is pretty cool. And he's also the executive producer on Space Jam. And um, what was the other one I wrote down that he actually did? Because I knew the Space Jam one already, and there was one I was quite surprised at. Heavy Metal! He was the executive producer on Heavy Metal. How cool! Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. But I, I, I think people forget as well. There's so many quotes from this film. I'm not going to do them, but there's so many quotes in this film. People forget that the first half of this film was pretty dark. Like, you see a dead body and everything in this film, and people swear, and there's drug use and stuff, and... Yeah, people forget that before he goes undercover, he looks like shit as well, and he's got, like... He's a gun-toting maniac-looking guy, but yeah. Kindergarten cop. Oh, that came out in 1990, so we're climbing. Um, okay, number two... I don't know, I know people are going to think, why have you put this as number two over Kindergarten Cop and all that sort of stuff, but I love this. True Lies. I don't have it again, but I do have number one, so you'll get a box for that. I love True Lies. That came out in 94. Yeah, it came out in 94. And of course it had Jamie Lee Curtis and Bill Paxton in it. And Tom Arnold, of course, which I didn't realise until later. Um, he plays a, a spy called Harry, along with Tom Arnold, who's also a spy. Uh, he's married to Jamie Lee Curtis, and he's never told her that he's a spy. So of course you're watching him be husband with Jamie Lee Curtis and Eliza Dushku who's about 15 in it I think, it was one of her sort of first proper films. Um, you're watching him in his home life and he goes off and does his spy stuff. So it's a good action-y espionage film. I don't tend to like, I hate James Bond. So I don't really go for those sorts of films but I like this because he's got, you know, his Arnie charm going on. He's got some charm. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is like the bored housewife, so she she kind of gets involved in what she thinks is an espionage type thing with Bill Paxton, who's a car dealer, and um, he just blatantly tells women that he's a spy <laughs> because he wants to be, like, be all hardcore, and he's not. So, of course, Harry finds out about this, and he basically sets her up, and he's like, right, okay, I've caught you, blah, blah, blah. that's it. Um... But she still doesn't know, because he does it all under a guise, so she still doesn't know. Um, so Bill Paxton is a bit of a knob in it, and um, you basically just watch her kind of breaking out of her housewife shell. And then he gives her a job, <laughs> he gives her a job to go and um, pretend to be a prostitute for some random guy. It turns out to be him sitting in the chair, and then she does this really like sexy dance. And I think most guys, most teenage guys probably we got their first awakenings because of Jamie Lee Curtis dancing around in her underwear in that movie. Especially when she like sticks her hair back and then she does that thing where she turns around on the bed and goes back. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's not really much else to say except for there is a serious um, like terrorism plot in it. I mean, it's all about these Muslims who want to do a huge like, you know, bomb. They want to like blow everything up. Um, Apparently there was going to be a sequel to this, but 9-11 happened, and they said no. <laughs> they were like, no, I don't, really don't think we should do this after 9-11 happened. So we do now. Um, but Eliza Dushku said last year, in 2012, she said there was going to be a sequel happening. Um, they said that it wasn't going to happen a couple of years before that, but I think that's the earliest we've heard about it, it was last year when she talked about it, and she said that there was going to be a sequel. Why are they doing a sequel? It's been too long. It's almost 20 years. I don't know why they do these things. Like Ghostbusters 3. That's what I didn't say. In Twins, there's going to be a film called Triplets. They're doing a, th a second Twins as well. It's been even longer. Why? Why would you do that? Okay. Wow, we're almost at 15 minutes. Jesus, and I've, I've got four films in in 15 minutes. Normally I'll get four films in in like, within an hour. 
Okay, last one. <laughs> yes, this is a this is a normal length review for five films. <laughs> Stop writing. Okay, right, number one. Last action hero. I love last action hero. I used to rent this so much. See, we don't have rental stores around here anymore. I think block I think Blockbuster still exists, but there are so few of them in our area that I don't know. Um, but you can't rent things anymore unless you go on like that that red box thing, that vending machine thing. So my days of renting videos and whatnot are over, well and truly. But this used to come home with me at least twice a week. I love this film. I don't know why I didn't buy it on video. I was like, hey, I don't know. Um, yeah, so Last Action Hero. Oh, I love this. Oh, it even says it includes behind the scenes feature at music video. So how awesome is that? I've got this for like 150. Um, it's overstocks. <laughs> Look him up. Um, yeah, this came out in 1993. It's got Austin O'Brien in it. He was in a bunch of other stuff. I think he was in Lawnmower Man. Or it might have been Lawnmower Man 2. No, maybe he's in both of them. I don't know what I'm talking about. The kid who was in a lot of 90s movies. That stupid kid. Um, he's in it. Charles Dance is in it, of course. Of course he's in it. They needed a villain. They phoned up a British guy. That's what they did in the 90s. <laughs> they did that to him in Golden Child too. They needed a villain. They needed someone to play the devil. They got Charles Dance. <laughs> um, so yeah, this came out in 93. And I love this film because the, the plot is amazing. It's a wonderful plot. I love... Films within films type plots, and this is basically a film within a film anyway. Um, Danny DeVito does the voice of the cat, that's a little cameo for you, another Danny DeVito Arnie collaboration. Um, yeah, the plot of this is Danny, 90s boy over here, Danny constantly shirks everything. He shirks school, he shirks, you know, spending time with his mum and everything to go to the movie theatre, one of them old school movie theatres, and he loves Jack Slater, who is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a film character called Jack Slater and he goes to watch the new he wants to go watch the new Jack Slater movie that's not out yet but the the proprietor proprietor of the theatre knows him very well so he's like come and have a free screening and you can come see it and he gives him what is a magic ticket it's a gold ticket and he says look Houdini gave this to me it's a little bit of backstory Houdini gave this to me when I was a kid, I've never used it, he said it was magic. So he gives it to Danny, Danny's sitting there watching the movie. The magic ticket allows him to then enter the movie and he enters the Jack Slater action movie. And he basically just kind of shadows Jack Slater for about 45 minutes, an hour, because he's in a movie world. So they do all these little cliches, you know, how like no one ever really dies from a gunshot wound. And, and like, I think there's a bit where Arnie falls into some tar and he gets out and he just none of it sticks because obviously it's a movie. And there's like guys in the closet and he already knows that they're there. He's like, oh, bang. Oh, how did you know the guy was in the closet? Oh, there's always a guy in the closet. It's hilarious. It's so funny. And obviously he's a real boy. So he's seen the movie. So he starts saying, look, I know what you're doing. I know the villain that you're after. I know where he lives. I know what he's doing. I know what he said. So obviously he keeps the whole movie. He just tries to convince Jack Slater that he's a, he's a real guy. Like, this is a movie. Um, and uh, he can help him out. So eventually he brings Jack Slayer out of his movie world into the real world and it kind of does a 180. So it's a really good film because it's got loads of action in it. Of course it's got stupid puns, it's got stupid this and stupid that. And, oh my god, that's ridiculous. Sorry. Wow. Okay, that's better. Um, yeah, and then obviously there's some real tender moments at the end where everything doesn't go the way Jack Slater thinks it's going to go, you know, it gets a bit darker right near the end and of course there's a huge protagonist, um, antagonist of Charles Dance but there's also, what's his name? Is he the Ripper? Why didn't I look this up before I did this review? The guy who's got the hook, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, I'm just stupid. So, yeah, last action hero, that was number one and let's keep talking for another 40 seconds and it's three minutes. Um, yeah, I would like to thank Too Cool Tim X. Hit me back up with a message because, like, the first person to actually ask me a proper movie question, which was nice. And of course, you're American, which makes you extra cool. Or maybe you're Canadian, I don't know. I will double check. I don't want to offend you. Um, but yeah, let me know if there's anything specific I can review for you. That'd be cool. And I'm done. So, it's clicked off. <laughs>